So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Basola from Curvel.com and today we're going to continue with the Power Query Challenge Marathon. In this case, or in this video, I'm going to show you how I actually solve the um, sessions, how I pick up the sessions from the website. Um, so the keynote, the key learning for this video is basically I'm going to show you how to promote rows to columns because that's what it was needed to do in order to get the sessions from the raw data. So I'll show you right away. Let's start. Okay, so for those of you that haven't heard about the challenge, what we are going to do and what I encourage you to do and give me a solution, it was how to come into this site, Tech Day Sweden, and get the information for the sessions, the um, dates, the meeting rooms, and the speakers. Okay, we will have wanted to have an Excel file that will give us all that information. Here are the, the meeting room. And uh, I've, uh, I'm going to show you how I did it, but I'm also going to show you how people in the Kerbal community did it too. Um, there is some beautiful code in there that I will show you. But uh, today we will stick again to my solution, and then tomorrow we will start with your solutions. But uh, uh, I was doing something, you know, quick and dirty code, so I needed to do this very, very fast. And I don't have any elegant thing to show. What I did was I went to the page, view page source, and then I just copied the code where the sessions were. And uh, I basically paste it in here so you can see it starts from the date because I wanted to have the sessions for the 25th of October and 26th of October I didn't want to have the sessions from the precon and this is the file that I've got and this is where I loaded into Power BI to clean it so let's go into Power BI and see how I did it okay so here we are in Power BI and this is exactly the same Excel file but it's now imported into Power BI and um, what I did was remove the top row and remove the bottom rows. This is where we have uh, like the footer pages and that, that kind of stuff. That it was not something that we needed to have here. I remove all the nulls. You can see it here. All these nulls. I took them away. And then I changed the type to text. And I filter out you know, on the website, there are two, let me show you here. They have the 24th, the 25th and the 26th. And this I don't want either. So I actually remove it from the code. And that is what you see here. I removed the 25th and the 26th, I didn't want it. And then here's where the magic actually starts. Um, if we go up, a little bit you will see that here we have the session the name of the session this is the date and the time but the time got split because I've fetched this into Excel which made it made it more difficult if you would have picked it up directly from the website it would have been much easier lessons learned this is the uh, meeting room and this is the description of the session what the session was about and these are the speakers in this case there are two Sometimes there are three, sometimes one, sometimes I think it's like up to eight speakers. I just wanted to have four because I wasn't going to show more than four pictures on the report. So this is what we have. Um, and we've now removed the dates and this is where the magic happens. What we want is to, I wanted to have an anchor point. I wanted to know where this place was and then work work my way up and down. So what I did is says, okay, if the column one, which is this, this our column one, contains 2017, then that means that is the date. This is where the event happened. So now I have a marker for where the event actually is, the date, and at least the start time, the end time it ended up in another column. I then added an index. And uh, 
now th this is where the magic happens what you want to do is promote these up one up okay so if this is the date and time the start time then you want to get the end time just right next to it so you want to do exactly this promote promote the row that you have below into a new column and how to do that i've shown you this in this summer olympics report but let's do it again so what I'm saying here is if uh, custom index equal date, which means if the column, so the value on the custom uh, column is equal date, then go index plus one so here we have index zero is there a date next to it on the custom column no so do nothing go to the next one index is there a date on the custom column yes and then it says okay if it is then do index plus one so do one plus one two and then where you have two get the value from column one you know, from here, 12, and put it in the index column, and the initial index column. So it is actually promoting this. We're going to do this a few times, so don't worry. I will explain it again. So what it's doing is finding the date, getting the column below, and put it next to it. And these we have for all the values. So it works gorgeous. Then what I did was basically clean that up. So I could do a join. So I made it a time and then I merged. It will come up again just in a second. So then I merged. So now we have the time, I mean the date and the time 11 and 12. That's great. Remove the columns that I didn't need anymore and uh, continue. So now we're going to promote the next one. And the next one is like that. So it is exactly the same exercise. If you have, um, let me see, so we see custom there. So if the column next to the index has the custom column has date then i want to have now promote down the session name so it goes here and it says okay is there a date on the custom column no so do nothing go to the next one is there a date to the custom column next to the custom column yes it is that's so, okay if it is then do index minus one so one minus one zero and put the contents on the column that we are creating okay so we do it one more time we go in here is there a date next to the custom on the custom column it is and then we are index eight and it says okay if it is then index minus one eight minus one is seven and then give us that text and put it on the column so that way we're actually getting all the sessions closed by the date when it's, they are happening and that happens everywhere because the structure always match so i always have session date and then we have the, the location the room and then uh, we have the description of the session what it varies is the name of the speaker so that's where we have to be careful sometimes there's one sometimes there's more so now we have that. Now we're going to promote the room. And we're going to do exactly the same as we did before. So if you find date, great. But now go two rows down from index. So if you're here, go index plus two. One plus two is three. Get the text that is in there and give us a new column. And then we have it. And now we're going to do the same with the description. So think about it, what it should be. 
I'm going to show you now is index plus three, okay? So let's check that out so you can see how it works. I have to put this one first in there so you can see. So if you find date on the custom column, do index plus three, one, two, three, and then that is the description. And that works beautifully. We get suddenly the description. Now, the first speaker is no issue in there either. So we do exactly the same, but we will do index, of course, plus four. Fantastic. Now is when things start to get a little bit tricky and I had to be a little bit creative. Why? Let me show you. We're going to do exactly the same, but we're going to do uh, index plus five to get the next speaker, if there is one, because sometimes there is not. So if there is a speaker, it will give me a speaker. If there is not speaker, then is when things will get a little bit problematic. Because if there is no speaker, then, I mean, if there is only one speaker, then it's going to give me the name of the next session. Okay, so let's go to that. Here, for example, we have two speakers. No problem, it will give me this one. But here, where we have only one speaker, it's going to give me that one. And this is the session name and we don't want that actually let me show you we do it carefully so we are here if there is date close to the index sign then go plus five five plus one six it will give me here where you have it the next speaker we go in here there is a um, date next to the index and now it will give me eight plus five 13 and this is not a speaker this is a session so it's going to give us the wrong information but this is what i did and i know this is i said it was like you know dirty code this is not meant to be beautiful it's just meant effective but this is what i did i knew i counted how many the length of the speakers of the name of the speakers and i realized that you know all these speakers had a name that it was less than 28 characters okay so the one that had the longest name it was 26 or 27 i don't remember so what i did it was okay I am going to say if the text is smaller than 28, that means that we found the speaker, otherwise null. So if this is less than 28, and I knew that all the speakers have less length than 26, then give me null. And for that, I have to fill in these nulls with text that it was longer than 28. And this is why you see this. <laughs> okay, again, this is like fast coding. I just went creative and I did it. And you, you will see how the elegant code would look like. I actually haven't checked all the codes myself. I don't know how they manage this. But... Uh, yeah, th th this is the situation. So this is the same for the speaker too. You know, we clean that up. Oh, that annoys me. There, it is cleaned up. We remove the column that we don't want, that we use, you know, to clean the text. And then we move to the next speaker. And we are going to have exactly the same issue there, but now a date is going to show up for speakers that have only one or two. Uh, so they have only one, sorry, only one speaker. So we need to clean that too. So what we're going to do, it's not that one, it's that one. So what we're going to do now is both if the text is longer than 28 and it contains 2017, then no, otherwise, hooray, hooray, we have a speaker, <laughs> okay? Again, this is dirty code, but hey, it works. Um, so if there is a third speaker, 
you'll find it. And then we remove the columns we don't want. And then now with the was the last one because I just needed four speakers. Um, so there, and then we clean it up and then we remove the column. Now, the next step is actually going to clean errors. Why? Well, when you go down, maybe we should go one step up. Let's go down, 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 down. Check it there. It's not showing me everything for some reason. Why not? Show me all. So here's the thing, when you go to the last speaker, then you're not going to get a value. You're going to get null in return. And I haven't guarded for that. So in the last row, I will get some errors and I want to remove them. So I just replace the errors with null. I didn't have time to do any, again, fine coding. So I said, whatever, just put them null. They should be null and uh, moved on. Then I remove all the nulls from the custom one. Let me show you here. So I remove all the empty spaces because that will give us the actual data. I rename the columns beautifully. So <laughs> they will mean something like season, title, room, description, speaker, and yeah and then i concatenated oh my god power bi is giving me a headache all day and then i did the concatenate that i explained on the previous video so i want to have a column where all the speakers are concatenated and this is what it does if you want an explanation on how this code works just check the solution from yesterday and you will see it there so here we have everything concatenated and then I merge with the pictures table that I did yesterday and voila, voila. We have URLs, we have speakers, we have sessions, we have everything. So easy, right? I, I mean, if you have to remember something from this video is this promote a role. I, I think it's a fantastic trick when you're cleaning stuff in Power Query. Extremely useful. I hope I explain it correctly because you will need it in the future if you haven't <laughs> needed it already. And it will help you clean absolutely everything. I mean, it's, it's magic, like true magic. It, this was something that Inke showed me for the Summer Olympics like a year and a half ago or, or a year ago. I don't remember. So I have the same challenge and she showed me, okay, you can do this. So I'm looking forward to see her code and to show you guys her code. Um, yeah, but this is Power Query Challenge Solution 2. Tomorrow I will work my way through, I don't know, perhaps I take Daniel. I think I'll take Daniel. See you tomorrow. Bye. Well, no, I can't say bye yet, right? I have to say, if you like the video, if you like the challenge, please like and I will do more challenges in the future. Share with people if they want to participate. It's not too late at all, but now I show how to do it. So perhaps it's too late. Mm. Anyhow, uh, join me if you're new to the channel. I publish videos on Wednesdays, Mondays and Fridays. And the Fridays I go through DAX and uh, DAX functions. And on Mondays is basically about M and Power Query, but sometimes I do other stuff. Uh, subscribe, subscribe. I, you will learn tons and tons. And click the bell for to receive notifications when I publish new videos, otherwise you won't. So have a great evening. Bye.